In this section, we're going to begin a new project and build a kind of boilerplate, an optimal setup for developer happiness and productivity that we can use in future projects. We'll set up Webpack and the Webpack dev server. We'll then unlock functionality to hot reload CSS changes as we make them. We'll look at how syntax errors can be surfaced in the browser. We'll create our own Webpack dev server with Express and middleware. We'll set up server-side reloading with Nodemon. And finally, we'll look at debugging on both the client and server-side with DevTools. All right, let's get into it. Now we're going to start by making a directory. We're going to call it Webpack Course. Let's CD into Webpack Course. And inside there, let's make three directories. We're going to do a source, a dist, and a config. All right, now let's set up our git code versioning. Let's do git init, period. Now let's initialize with npm. We'll do npm init dash y. That gives us all the defaults. Okay, now that we have a package.json, let's create a git ignore file with one line in it, node modules. All right, now it's time to install Webpack. Let's npm install dash g webpack webpack CLI. So usually, Webpack takes a configuration file. In Webpack 4, they've introduced the possibility of using Webpack without a configuration file. So to do that, let's create a couple of files inside of our directories. Let's create source index.js and dist index.html. Now let's open those in our text editor. All right, so let's test this real quick. We're going to add something small to each one of these. So if you look at the Webpack help, you can see that there's a lot of flags. You can use these flags to run Webpack without a config file. Let's give it a shot. We're going to say Webpack mode development. OK, that seemed to have worked. Let's do mode production. It is smaller. That's cool. To really use Webpack, you're going to want to add loaders and plugins. So a config file is really the best place for that. Let's create a config file now. We're going to touch config webpack dev.js. Let's remove the main.js from dist and the index.js from source. Now inside our config file, let's set this up with the basic options to get the webpack dev server running. The webpack config file exports an object in the common.js style. That object takes three parameters, entry, mode, and output. So inside of our entry, let's create a new bundle. The bundle will be called main, and it'll point at source main.js. So let's create that now, source main.js. Now the mode will be development. It can either be development or production for production environments. In output, the first parameter is the file name. This will be what we plan to call the file once Webpack processes it and outputs it. The convention is to call it name bundle.js, where this bracketed name becomes the name in the entry object. So in this case, main bundle.js. Secondly, we want to give it an absolute path. So we'll say path, and then for this one, we'll use the path package that comes standard with Node. So let's grab path from require path. And we'll say path resolve current directory with dir name. And then we'll back out one and go to dist. Since we want all of our files to end up in dist. All right, so let's give that a shot, see if it works. We're going to call webpack and we're going to point to our config file. And we have output. Cool. So you can see it ended up in the main bundle JS. So this file is only 85 lines long. Most of it is Webpack boilerplate code. Paths in the entry are always relative paths to where Webpack is run from. In our case, it's run from the root. You can also use an array. If you have multiple files, and Webpack will concatenate them together. All right, it's time to get this running in a browser. We'll need our index.html in disk to be filled out a little bit. So let's give it the bare minimum. We'll say hello world. And we'll give it a script tag. 
script tag will point at our main bundle. Now inside our webpack.dev, we're going to want to give our output one more parameter, public path. We're going to give it the root path. But if you wanted this to be in JS, for instance, you would give it the JS path. Next, we want to add options for our dev server. It's going to have one property, content base. And we're going to say that's dist. So everything will be served out of dist when we run the Webpack dev server. All right, so let's npm install. And we're going to do a dash s to save these locally. We're going to do Webpack, Webpack CLI, and the Webpack dev server. All right, cool, they all came down. So let's run our Webpack dev server now. I'm gonna say Webpack dev server config, and we'll point to our config file. And built extremely fast. What do we got here? All right, it tells us where our project is running, where it's being served from, which folder the content is coming from. Let's look it up in the browser. Hold command and double click. And there we have it. We have a hello world with a hello alert to hello world. Save it. And it automatically reloads their new alert. It's pretty crazy. So now that we have the Webpack dev server going, you can see there's a couple of extra files here. This is the WebSocket connection the Webpack dev server uses to establish that hot reloading that we just saw. Now this will make the file look unnaturally big in development. It's now 371 lines, but this is Webpack dev server code, and it's not gonna end up in the production build. Okay, we're up and running. In this episode, we got a new project going with Webpack 4 installed. The Webpack dev server command brings us hot reloading on our JavaScript file right out of the box. Webpack also handles CSS, images, and other kinds of files, and that's what we're gonna get into in the next episode. See you there.